Hey guys, welcome to Beyond Social Media Day One. I am Amber Snow. Drop some love if you are watching the recording or if you're on live. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys tonight. Uh, just let me know that you're here and we're going to get started right away because I know most of you guys are going to watch the recording, so I don't want to waste a bunch of time. Oh, hey, yay, Jen's on. Okay. Um, so a little bit about me, since many of you may not have any idea who I am. Yay, Jen! I'm so excited for this. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited to hear from everybody else. It's so scary going first. So I'm like, I don't know what everyone else is going to say, but here's what I have to say. Um, I do want to, I do want to say like, there's going to be amazing speakers all week on this topic and we're all going to have different advice and different approaches and things like that. So I would really recommend that you watch all of them because you're going to find things that really speak to you that I say or that Danielle says, or Jamie says, um, it's, it's one of those things where you're going to find a little bit of you in everybody. So I would recommend watching all of them because I'm not the you know foremost expert on the things I'm gonna talk about tonight. I just wanna share with you the things that made the biggest difference in my business, um, building a foundation of building in person. I think we're all gonna have really different perspectives. So I'm excited to watch the other ones myself so that I can even supplement what I'm bringing to the table. So anyway, my name is Amber. Um, I am in San Diego, California. If you are San Diegan, then I'm actually in Santee, uh, East County kid over here. And I have been elite three times. I was number five uh, in 2014. Um, and I'm a seven star and I have almost a hundred months in success club. I want to say 98 or something. Um, and I'm like this close to the million club, this close. Um, and I'm just here to tell you a little bit about how I was able to reach all those goals with a 96% retention rate in my business, which means when coaches sign with me, for the most part, they don't leave. So my top 10 year, um, looking back over the two years prior, I had a 96% retention rate. And I really, really, really uh, attribute that to the fact that I, I built in person first. Um, so I wanted to really talk to you guys about building a foundation of real connection. And when you like where you're putting your efforts of learning and practicing and honing skills, you know, a lot of people want to focus on getting just the right hashtag or figuring out just the right SEO. And we put so much time and energy and effort into those trainings, right? And, and to learn these skills. And a lot of times in this social media world, we don't hone the skill of connecting with each other the way that we should um, to create lasting relationships and a longevity in your business. Um, so I have actually been a coach since 2009 officially. Um, for me, I was a discount coach at, at, the, at the start, but I met my coach in a gym in person and she got out, this is not an exaggeration, pulls out of her gym bag an eight by 10 printed copy of her before and after. So like, this is the world I'm, I'm living in when I'm signing up. Like it wasn't like I found her scrolling Insta, right? Like that's not what happened. She pulls this paper out and is like, this is my transformation. Old school. Okay. Um, <laughs> she invited me not to her sneak peek on Facebook, not to anything on Facebook. She invited me to an in-person business opportunity meeting. That was no joke almost two hours away. And she drove me there. Now you have to understand, I met my coach at a time in my life where I was in such a dark place. You know, I was almost 300 pounds. I was recently divorced. I'm going to have to just ignore these comments. Like, can you turn those off? I have the worst ADD and I can't take Adderall at night. So I'm <laughs> just going to pretend like I can't see those. Um, I don't know what I was talking about now. Good thing I have notes. Lucky for you guys. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I was recently divorced. I was, I just filed bankruptcy. I was learning to live on an, a one person income for the first time as an adult. Um, I didn't see a lot of point left in my life. I spent a lot of time with my, with suicidal thoughts and it was just, I was in a negative place. So really I just was looking for connection more than anything. And she was kind to me and I figured I didn't really have much to lose besides, you know, hundred and 
30 pounds and a bad attitude about life. Um, so why wouldn't I get in the car with this girl, right? But this is not something that's done very often anymore. Um, people are usually like, you want to come to my free Facebook group? But she was like, hey, you want to come to this meeting? I will come get you and drive you to Orange County. Obviously, we were connected after that experience, right? So what I think is really interesting about that is that I actually worked in digital marketing at the time. So I had the foundation to understand what was possible with the internet. I understood. I understood what was possible with Facebook pages, with blogs, all of this. Like, I got it. So I wasn't afraid to use those skills, but the foundation of meeting her and, and in her, in her fitness class and her being kind to me and sharing her story, um, it was very real. There was something there. And since I did meet, um, my coach prior to turbo fire, it was like the turbo kick world. Um, it was one of those things where people noticed if you didn't show up, right. As it became a gym person, people noticed if you didn't show up. People were happy to see you. There was this foundation of connection from the very beginning for me. It didn't stop me from using my social media. I was one of the very first coaches to make a Facebook page. And I remember somebody from corporate being like, what are you doing? Why do you have like 20,000 followers on Facebook and no one's even on Facebook? Because you have to understand you guys, in 2009, Facebook hadn't been open to the public all that long. Because Facebook started as a college only platform, which I had but I had 224 friends on Facebook and I had a strict rule. If I didn't know you, you weren't allowed on my social media. Like if I didn't personally know you, you were, and I was like locked down private. Like it was none of your business what I was doing. Okay. But since I understood that I could use Facebook and in-person building, I started to do something really interesting was I actually used my social media to support building a business in person. So I want you to think about this. Like when I'm taking a picture, it's, I started officially working my business a year later after I signed up and I lived in a world of literal catalogs, paper catalogs of Beachbody products, programs, um, paper order forms with, um, what is that stuff called? Carbon copy, like receipt on the back. Anyway, um, if you wanted to be a coach, you had to sign a piece of paper and fax it. The number of times I drove to people's houses to get them to sign their coach applications was just ridiculous. So I'm coming from this world where like I'm carrying around like an accordion file of papers, like Shakeology brochures, Fit Club waivers, coach applications, catalogs. I'm making stickers with my name on them. Like this is the world where I started. So as social media has changed, what that has given me is I'm not afraid to talk to you in person. I'm not afraid. You're not going to scare me away with having to talk to you at a barbecue or in an elevator because social media added to my business. It wasn't my business. Okay. And I'm, I'm very good at social media. Um, I mean, there's a reason why I freelanced in it and I owned a marketing, you know, helped be part of owning a marketing firm and I'm good at it, but there was a foundation. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is like three main areas of building in person, building in your community. Okay. Now, if you're an introvert, I want you to, what's a fax machine, right? Girl. Yes. What's a fax machine. Um, right. Um, okay. So one thing, if you are introverted and right now I just lost you, like you completely checked out on me and you're like, Nope, not doing that. I hear my kid. Well, we'll see how, well, I don't know how that's going out there, but, um, and I just lost you because you're like, Ooh, no, no, thank you. That sounds like I'm gonna have to like pick up a phone or like see a person. Listen to me, you guys, I am an introvert by nature. Understand that introvert does not mean you don't want connection and you don't like people. Okay. It means that you value things a little differently and you recharge your batteries differently. I, as an introvert, I like to do things that are, you know, like a super Saturday that are all big, but then I'm like, don't talk to me. I need 48 hours to recover from being on. Right. Um, my husband's very different. He gets energy when he is around people, right? He's an extrovert. It doesn't mean that because you know, it's very in to be introverted right now. Cause like, I don't know. I think social media like really 
lets us all be more awkward and, and like, just like claim it and own it. But it's not an excuse. Okay. It's not an excuse. So if you find yourself going, well, I'm introverted. This like, I'm checking out, like, don't leave yet. Because what's cool about this is that introverts do really well in small groups. We want human connection. We want deep connection. We want real friendships. We just do better in a smaller group versus a really, really big group. And the things that I'm going to go over, they're going to work for introverts and extroverts. Okay. Um, I actually have an outline for you guys. I mean, it's just my notes, but I'm going to drop the Google doc when I'm done. And there's a little picture in there of introverts, introverts versus extroverts. And just some of the traits that might be relevant when you're throwing events um, with people. Okay. So why should you bother listening to every, anything I have to say for the next 30 minutes? You're going to get a better return on your time. The time you invest in skills and your capabilities and all of that, like hour per hour, if you make in-person connections, you will have a higher return because you're going to have a faster sales cycle. You're going to have a longer retention with customers and coaches. Um, and this is just like science. This is just, it's all over network marketing. Um, you're going to have better results for yourself physically because you can't hide. One thing I say a lot is like one of the reasons I started a fit club was because I had so much weight to lose that what a really good way to stay on your journey. If you're going to see the people you're trying to get to join you every week, like don't screw up. <laughs> like You better be focused. So I got better results because of the in-person connection. They got better results as well because same thing both ways, right? For my customers. Um, you will have deeper friendships and you will have a tighter knit team because what do we know? Time, quality time, not just time, time, but quality time spent together creates relationships. That's where the inside jokes come from. And when you get to know something interesting about somebody that you relate to, that happens by spending time. So you'll have um, just a tighter knit team and deeper connection. So this is why you want to listen to me and to everyone else speaking this week the return for you is going to be so much more, even if this is less comfortable, even if it's a little more time consuming at first, even if there's a monetary investment somewhere that you don't, you're not used to making in social media, even then your return is still going to be higher. Okay. So, um, social media is not seriously, no sneaky camera angles. Y'all, you can't hide. I can't be like, look how skinny I look. If you're going to see me, possibly take a picture of me yourself and tag it. Like I got to bring it right. I have to be constantly improving. So social media, please understand that I'm not saying we don't need it. I'm the biggest proponent of social media. I'm on social media every single day. I probably have not missed a social media day in probably seven years. That is not an exaggeration. Um, I believe in social media. So do not like burn down your Facebook and Instagram, but listen, social media, for all the things I'm about to tell you right now, it is a supporting role, okay? So think about this. Let's say you're in a local mom group or a local singles group or a group for like your kid's school. It's a Facebook group and you're connected to those people, but they meet in person. They have a purpose. So that's why the group works. So what happens if you meet this mom over here at this thing um, and then you're in a Facebook group together, what does that do for you? It provides an ability to continue the conversation, to keep building the friendship, to maintain a friendship. If someone's busy and doesn't come to events, they're not gone off your radar. Um, it's, you know, if I meet you at a barbecue and I'm not going to see you until the next holiday and I'm like, well, now it's go, I'm going from uh, Easter to Memorial day. I'm not going to see you. If I'm on social media with you, we're connected. I'm still building a relationship with you. We are still connecting. I'm learning about you. I'm thinking things are interesting about you. I see something fun. I shared on your wall. Like there's a purpose still, even if you built your business in person, you do need to have a social media presence. I completely, completely uh, believe that. I also think it continues to, it gives you like an ability to grow your network further in a really organic way. So let's say me and Jen, we, um, we meet in person and you we're at an event. And I take a picture and a selfie and I tag Jen on my social media. All of Jen's friends just saw that. And my credibility with them has increased a little bit. And every time I tag a picture with Jen, my credibility with Jen's friends are, is increasing. 
they're like, they must actually be friends. She must really like this girl. They keep hanging out, right? So I think that the more you can use your social media, the more you can grow your network faster because people are more likely to accept that friend request, right? Or accept that message request from you because I, oh, you're Jen's friend. I see you on our Facebook all the time. Cool, right? So there is a purpose. So please don't get rid of your social media, please, okay? So I broke this down into three areas of building and I'm gonna try to do this quickly so that my East Coasters don't just like fall asleep on me, okay? So I have this broken down into events that are already happening in your friends and family circle, events that are happening in your community already, and then events that you host, okay? So the first one, I want you guys to think we just had a holiday if you celebrate Easter. Um, if you don't, maybe you just hung out. Anyways, I want you to think about holidays and gatherings, birthdays, holidays, events that are already happening in your friend circle or your family circle, okay? What I notice is what coaches tend to do, which is the opposite of what I want you to do, what they tend to do is they're like, that's their off day. They get to go back to being who they used to be. Um, they almost go into these, they're almost like afraid or ashamed of their business going into an event with their friends and family. Like they don't want to be that person, quote unquote. So they hide their business when they go into these events. But there's a lot of subtle ways to bring your business into events that already that are already happening, happening. Um, that are I'm laughing at the small town because I have a girl who's about to go diamond on my team who literally lives in like a town of nothing in Nebraska and she just goes to everyone's house and meets up with them. Like she's like half the inspiration for me getting back together, like getting back my in-person events. Um, so I mean, it just it doesn't matter, but. Um, I'm going to stop reading those and pay attention to my notes. Um, holidays and gatherings, all this stuff that's already happening. You can show up to those ready to build relationships around your business without having to be like, I don't know. It's just, if you're not proud of your business, it can be really difficult. Um, I had a, a, the, Eric Warry says in order to be successful in network marketing, um, you have to be in love with three things. This is not in my notes, Side, sidebar. In love with three things. One, the products. Obviously, you love the products, right? Two, the company. Love our company. Love what it stands for. Love our leadership. Love what we do here. Three, network marketing as an industry, which I am. I am a huge fan. I love that it's ordinary people doing extraordinary things. So I walk into events proud of what I do. Very proud. And I really, you have to carry that with you. But when I go to an event, I'm thinking about the fact that I'm representing what I do, but I'm representing it in person. So I'm showing up looking my very best, my absolute best. I am showcasing my results, okay? I am showing up looking my best. And not just like, oh, I got skinnier, but do I look lighter and happier? And am I dressed well? Like the things that people go, I don't know what this girl's doing, but I want to be near it, you know? Um, am I making healthy choices at that event? Am I setting an example or am I showing up just being like, I guess it's a day off. It's a holiday. Look, bring on the cake. Like, no, I have had situations where I've walked into an event and I've had friends go, Oh, Amber. Okay. You're here. We got you a veggie tray. If that happens to you, you're doing it right. Okay. That means you're doing it right. Um, something that I, I always tell people to do and I've always done, walk into that event finishing your Shakeology. Not only is it gonna help you make better choices while you're at the event, but everyone just saw you. Proof that you do drink it every day. Have beach bars in your purse. We have so many more products now. This was so much harder back then. We had the two flavors of Shakeology um, and nothing else. I think we had you know vitamins or something. I didn't walk around with my fish oils, but you know. Um, bring Shakeology snacks to the event. Like showcase this. If you would eat it and you think that's a fun thing to bring to a potluck, make it for them. Share it and have them go, damn, these are good. Because what are Shakeology cookies? Mostly chocolate and peanut butter, right? They're bomb, okay? Um, and this one, I think is people are so afraid of this. And I'm just going to say, like, we've gotten away from this as a network and y'all, you need to do it. Why don't you have your products with you? Why are there not samples in your bag if you're going to a family barbecue? Because of that aunt that you only see once every three months, who's going who's gonna to be like, yeah, I haven't mean to ask you about that. 
Why are you going to be like, cool, I'll bring you one the next time I see you in three months? No, I have a Shakeology sample in my bag. It's got my information sticker on it. Cover up that Shakeology.com, right? With your own info. Um, and a recipe card already, already stapled to it. Like, here's how I want you to make it. I will call you tomorrow to see what you thought. There's no reason. If it comes up, now do you need to start, do not show up and just start handing out samples like party favors. That is not what I'm saying. Don't make it weird. But if it comes up as your career naturally should in a situation where you're catching up with people, be prepared and don't be afraid to treat your business like a business, right? It's just something people are so afraid of these days, which just kills me. And my final piece of going to family events is do not participate in the gossip and the negativity and all the crap that happens at family events. Set an example, be a leader, be positive, change the subject, lead, always be leading. So many times people use the, uh, I'm at a holiday with my family as this huge excuse to just revert back to the person that they were instead of continue to grow into the person that they're trying to be. And that doesn't work. And so I'm listing these in my opinion, in easiest to hardest. So these events are already happening. All you have to do is show up and set an example, right? Like I'm pointing to my notes like you can see them, but like all you have to do is show up and set an example. That's the easiest one. Now the next category, connecting in your community and the things that are already going on, a little bit harder, okay? And then finally, when you're hosting, those are gonna be the hardest because they're gonna take the most effort, investment, et cetera, right? So um, connecting in your community. This honestly just takes some intention. Um, I love the three foot rule. Put your damn phone away and talk to anyone who's within three feet of you. And I don't care what you're talking to them about. It doesn't matter. Do you like their shoes? Do you have a question? Make some conversation. There are other human beings near you. Everybody put your phone away, you know, stop taking pictures of it <laughs> and start participating in it. Um, so to me, if it's if they're within three feet of you, and this is a standard network marketing rule, like it's standard, okay? If they're within three feet of you, open your mouth. The number of times I have gotten a an email address on the back of a grocery receipt because of someone I was standing in line with, like it's countless. I couldn't even tell you. Because what? I'm just talking to them and something will come up. Maybe I have a fit club I can invite them to. Maybe I have one of the 90 things I'm going to suggest you guys do in the last section going on. Maybe I have my free group on Facebook and I just say, Hey, you want to be friends on Facebook? I have a free group. I share recipes and motivation in there because something comes up. I can quickly make those connections in person, but it will never happen. I will never have the opportunity to make that connection. If I don't put my phone down and look around and talk to people that are near me, it's so important. Okay. And no, not every single person is going to become your friend or give you their email address. That would be just weird. But if you're not creating the opportunities to connect, it's never going to happen, right? So pay attention to the world around you. Um, wear your wear and share. I love this shirt. It's blinged. You guys, I used to shop at Whole Foods before I had a kid, spent all my money on her, and now I just shop at regular stores. But I used to shop at Whole Foods when I was a double income, no kids house. And I used to wear my P90X specifically to Whole Foods because it was the, it's the most noticeable, memorable program. People will catch it. That and 21 day fix. Like they'll usually, someone will notice. I don't wear the more obscure stuff. Um, I'm not kidding you. Every single guy at the butcher's counter was doing P90X within a few months of me shopping there. And it was really fun because I would like go in there and they'd be like, Oh, P90X girl. And I'd be like, how are you doing? And he'd be like, Oh, I fell off. Or like, I'm so sore, whatever, whatever. Right. But I would get their email while I was talking to them because they would see the shirt. We'd have a conversation. I'm already talking to them to get whatever my bacon or my ground turkey or whatever's going on. Um, why not continue the conversation, grab more contact info and turn that into something. But that starts with wear and share. I actually have a friend, um, a, a girl who just is in my challenge group now who I was wearing a 21 day fix extreme shirt to like Victoria's Secret and she works there. And she stopped me and it was like, oh, that program is so crazy. Like she was talking about the original one, but still, um, we started talking, her coach had just quit. Well, let me help you with that. I can help you with that. Right. Um, she was looking for a new group. She was looking for somebody. And I was like, well, we would have never had that conversation if I wasn't wearing the shirt. 
So wear it. Now I'm going to say, ladies, and guys too, I know that it can be difficult if you are overweight and you're wearing wear and share. Please understand that my coaching journey started when I was very heavy. Okay. By having an in-person conversation with people, I actually had more credibility than if I was doing it on social media because they could see me getting smaller. Also, I could say something like, yeah, I've only been doing it for three months, but I've lost X number of pounds. I'm really excited. I really love P90X. It is easier to do it if you're wearing the wear and share. And I know that sometimes it can make you feel like you shouldn't be wearing it or it's an embarrassment or you don't fit the, like a lot of women in the, in the business, when we get our little tiny tank tops from Beachbody, um, we don't want to wear them because we don't feel like we are representing beach body yet. Like we want to wait till we get goal weight or whatever. Listen to me all. I lost 110 pounds and I never saw my goal weight on the scale. Not once I got within six pounds once, but it never happened. It has never happened. I've been at this game almost a decade. Don't let that hold you back because trust me for the people it starts a conversation with, you can tell them your story and they'll get excited off the passion you have. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be what your Instagram photo looks like. You don't have to have a before and after. You can just be excited. People want to be around that kind of energy. So that was a sidebar. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. Where is you? No? Okay. All right. Connecting in your community. You guys, how many people do this? Go on, go on Facebook. See, we're going to use a little social media. Go, you go on Facebook and you just click on events and it says find events nearby, right? So you can click on this weekend or today or whatever. I don't know how busy you are today, but it's Monday, so I'm not doing emails tonight. I think it's like late where you are. And you can find all these things, all these things to do by your house, okay? These events are already happening. Someone already set these up. You don't have to do anything but show up. First thing first, if I'm even remotely interested, I click interested because it's going to show it to all my friends. So that's cool. Um, it's also going to help me find people who are interested in the same kind of stuff that I'm interested in. Um, cause if I'm like, Oh, that sounds so fun. Um, then somebody else would probably also think that sounds so fun. And if I'm like, I don't want to do that. Probably my people are not at that event. Right? So there are events happening on Facebook, on Craigslist, on meetup, meetup.com. If you've never heard of that site, um, these events are already happening. Your kid's school is putting on events. Your uh, your place of employment could be putting on events. There are events happening around you. You don't have to do all this work by yourself. Okay. There are places you can volunteer. Your church may have events. There is always a 5k. Always. If you go on active.com, I should write that somewhere on these notes, active.com. There's all the like running stuff, all the 5ks. You can volunteer at the 5ks. Um, you can run or walk the 5ks. I have Tons of like we did the color run and the bubble run and all the things, right? Um, and volunteering for causes that make you excited. Um, I have I have done um, meals for people with AIDS, like filled the, the lunches, like next to people on my team more than once. We may have met there or I may have met somewhere else and I wanted to also do this and then they became team members. I don't know. But if they're down with that and I'm down with that, let's go do it together right? So these things are already happening. So all you have to do is be intentional about saying, I will go to one event a week. If you have kids, make it family friendly. If you don't, don't, whatever. Like be intentional about finding one thing a week that you can just go to and show up at and then document it for social media, take pictures, tag people, invite people to go with you, invite people to the events, Try to create that community, and if not, three-foot rule. If you're there alone, three-foot rule. These people, you already have common ground. If you're at something you both wanted to go to, there's like a butterfly thing. I don't know, a butterfly festival or something. Like, if y'all both show up at the butterfly festival, conversation does not need to be awkward. Talk about butterflies. Like, not hard, right? So this is already happening all over the place. And it's not just limited to Facebook, but like yeah, meetup.com is amazing. I love that. I really believe that coaches should host a meetup and 
a, be in a ton of meetup groups of their own. Um, like, like have one that you run, but be in all the other ones. Cause meetups like its own little social media world anyways, where like the owners of that group will be in your group. And then you meet people who've crossed over and then like they went to the hiking group and then now they want to go to your yoga thing. Like it's kind of its own social media world in itself. It's really interesting. Um, and people will say, Oh, if you join this group, she has good events. Like you should go join that one. Um, and meetup is gotten really, really big. I don't think it's in really small towns. Um, because people have to pay to run a meetup group. It's like $40. And I don't think that, I mean, I feel like if it's a really small town, you probably have like a local place where that sort of stuff happens. Like we have um, classified and event groups on Facebook. We just have smaller stuff for specifically Santee where I live, but like San Diego is really big. So there's meetups for that. Does that make sense? So you might, it might not be meetup specifically, but wherever the local events happen in your town, you can find people on there. You can also host people on there. So connect with your community. And the reason why I want to start with your friends and family, your inner circle, and then your community that's already happening is because so many people create all these roadblocks. Because when I say like, okay, we're going to start a fit club. They're like, oh my, I need to find a place. I need to do this. I need people to come. Now I have to advertise. And like their brain just melts because it's way too much. So you don't have to start there. You can just intentionally grow your social media network by meeting people in person. And again, it just takes intention. I remember one time I have a picture. I did like a, a boudoir photo shoot um, for like my 30th or maybe after. And I had it framed, but it had a glare on it. So when I took it in. I was like, this glass is not going to cut it because I have a window in my bedroom and now I can't see my picture. And I lost a hundred pounds. So I want to be able to see this picture. Um, and I mean, I wasn't rude. I was nice. I was just making conversation with the girl of like, this is really important to me. This commemorates me losing a hundred pounds. Like I really want this done well. Like, can you help me find another glass? I didn't have to say that to her. I could have just said, I don't like this glass and moved on. Well, of course that started a conversation. And of course we're still Facebook friends eight years later. Of course we are. Right. But I had to be intentional about that. It was important that I go out. I tell people all the time, like I used to do it in the grocery store and now I get my groceries delivered. Okay. Somebody, I still talk to my shoppers while they're shopping. I still, and I only get them delivered because I'm not walking up all of these stairs with a toddler and all those groceries. Oh my goodness. No way in hell. No chance. I will pay you the money to bring them to me because I'm not doing it. Um, it's just, it's too, it's too much. Right. But I, there's still people actually shopping. I can talk to them. They'll talk to me back when they get here. We can have a conversation. I oftentimes friend them on Facebook. I have a lot of people who have delivered me things um, for one reason or another, who I'm friends with on Facebook. And I don't do it to everyone because I don't want like everyone. But if we click and I love your vibe, I'm thinking you're already like straight hustler. Like you're out there busting your butt. I've, I've shopped for Instacart before. I know what that's like. Like, so obviously you're my people, you're my people. You're not afraid of some hard work. So let me bring you in my circle. We'll see if we like each other, right? So connecting in your community. Again, bring them back to your social media though. And be present on social media so they can keep getting to know you. Otherwise, it's just going to be that one girl I met that one time, Victoria's Secret, and I don't, I don't know what happened, right? So, okay. This is all the stuff that you guys really want to hear now. Thanks for humoring me through all the stuff I already said. But, you guys, hosting your own events. Now, I made a list of like a million. And I'm not going to go over a million, but I'll, I'll give you the list. Um, I'm going to talk in depth on two that I think can be really good foundations. And then I'll just go through what I think these other ones are. So I'm going to go through the list really quick. I'm just going to rattle them off again. I'll drop this Google doc. Um, and you guys can, you know, always add to it. If you think of something that I didn't, um, but here are some thoughts of these are things I've actually done that have been an absolute blast. So I'm going to say fit club and shake and share parties. Yes. But I'm just going to put that over there for a second because we're going to go through and talk about that in depth. Okay. But vision board parties every January, there was this amazing coffee shop when I lived in Austin, um, that you could like rent out the room, but you didn't have to pay for the room. People just had to buy coffee. As long as there was like 20 bucks an hour worth of coffee, you could stay in there as long as you reserved it. So cool. It had a big table. You could fit like 10 or 12 people in there. Uh, you know, advertising in advance. We, we brought in, 
magazines. It was a blast. And it, I just put it on Meetup and Craigslist and people showed up. I may have put it on Facebook too. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but um, vision board parties are amazing. Grocery store tours. Do you know that if you go, if you call a grocery store, most of them have people dedicated to promoting their store at Whole Foods. They'll actually take you around and they will show you how to save money at Whole Foods. They'll show you where they keep the coupons. They'll show you where all the Whole 60, Whole 365 brand stuff is. They'll talk about sales. It's amazing. Like, it was really cool. I love the Whole Foods grocery store tour. Um, having healthy barbecues and get-togethers at your house, at a park, potlucks. I mean, why not have a good time, get together, throw a frisbee around, play some flag football, let your kids hang out, let your pets hang out, whatever. Um... Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. Sorry, somebody said something about being introvert. It's true. I'm super introverted. Like, after this, I'm just going to go, like, turn off all the lights and sit in a dark room. But you can do these sorts of things because it's real. These are real connections. So, sorry. Um, yes, Moms at the Library. I have met a lot of moms at the library. My kid's, like, too rambunctious for the library now. And now I'm, like, afraid to meet moms at the library because I'm going to be embarrassed because my kid's, like, I don't know bulldozer but yes when she was smaller and, and less crazy it did like the library um, okay so what was I gonna say you guys I don't know what I'm talking about now healthy barbecue oh so walk and talks so yes I had a fit club and I am gonna talk about that but you guys fit clubs can take a lot of prep and work and like finding a location and stuff for the longest time I didn't have a fit club I just said hey we're gonna have a walk and talk bring your kids bring your pets I don't know whatever you want to do I didn't have kids or pets but I was like hey you can do what you want. And we just walked around the golf course. It's a three mile loop. Or um, at Choyas Lake, there's like a 0.8 mile loop. We would just walk. And I would just pick different places. There's a lake up in Miramar. I would just pick different places. We would walk around. That was it. Like we walked and we talked. People are like, yeah, but how do you sell stuff that way? That's not the point, you guys. If you connect with people at that level and you get to know them and you get to know their kids and their pets and you, and you, see the whites of their eyes and shake their hands and hug them like and they're on your social media the next time you go to share something about a challenge group or whatever you send them a personal message and invite them to something they're going to listen like a million times more than if you'd never met them in person okay it really does it doesn't have to be about making the sale during the activity that's not the point that's why i love i have on here doing a theme parks zoo so I live in San Diego. We have a world famous zoo, but they give us really cheap, really cheap. It's a very relative term. Um, I'm going to say less expensive than normal um, zoo passes. If you're a resident, tons of people I know have them. Um, me and my best friend shared one for the longest time because you can have two and we would walk because it's very hilly and it's a long walk. They open at nine. We'd walk. We worked at 1130. We walk around. It was our workout. And you can bring people with you. I've invited, I started inviting people to come with us. Like you can grow just by based on doing things you already want to do. So when I say host, don't always think that you have to put on this big event. Sometimes you just have to invite people to the places you already want to go. And that counts as hosting. So, um, meetup.com. I loved it. What I would do, what I did for my meetup, this is not an exaggeration. I found all, I searched the internet for free events and I put them on my meetup and then I would go to them. So my whole thing was finding free fitness events, a free CrossFit class at that place, a free yoga place down in Hillcrest, like a free whatever. And I would just put them on my meetup. They weren't my events. I was just saying, hey, we should go to this. You guys want to come? People will go. It was awesome. Um, and then eventually I added my walk and talks and my fit club and things like that. And, it, and my vision board parties. And I added all that to my meetup eventually. But we all start somewhere, right? I didn't know what I was doing. There was no, there was no YouTube. We didn't have an online office. We had previous office view. If you all been around for a long time, you know what that is. If you don't, if you haven't just, just be glad you've never seen it. So we didn't have these other ways of like training or learning. So I was just doing stuff, seeing what happened. Right. Um, you can post events on Craigslist. You can find the best in events on Craigslist. You can post your events on Facebook. Um, which of course I feel like we all know that, but like real in-person events show up in people's local events. When you do your sneak peek and you do like location zoom, that's not showing up in anyone's local events. Zoom is not a place, right? I know we think it is cause we live on there. It's not. 
Um, but if you put San Diego, or even better, if you live in a smaller town, it's actually a little better because then it'll show up super local, like very specific location, Lake Murray, like it's going to show up next to those people who live right there. That's a really good tool. And you don't have to do anything. You just have to show, make the event. It doesn't cost anything, right? So girls' nights were always a blast. Um, you know, just going out with the same girls you saw at Fit Club in the morning. You're going out, whatever, dancing at night. Um, clothing swaps, if you guys have, like, weight loss going on and your people have weight loss going on, guess who's going to need new clothes? Everybody. So I would have people come over. We all, you know, 20 girls trying on each other's clothes. It was a huge ruckus. There'd usually be champagne because that's kind of how I roll. And then everything that people didn't want, I took the women's shelter afterwards. And people got to be part of something really cool. They also got to give and be part of something where the clothes went to the women's shelter. And I didn't have to do anything but invite people. That's it. Like, it was that simple. So hosting doesn't always have to be this big deal. So I've done birthday parties. There were years where my birthday parties were full of my coaches and customers. Um, and now I'm like, I don't know. I'm too tired for birthday parties. I think I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just throw my kids' birthday parties and invite them all to that instead. Um, but th I mean, why not? Why not? I had pool parties and potlucks and all sorts of stuff where I invited my people. It was just another way to get to know each other and build, build relationships. Why not? Beach days, because, you know, I live in San Diego, we can do that. Um, anyway, point being, there's a lot of things you can do that don't require you to, quote, unquote, host something. Like, I'm going to talk about Fit Clubs and Shake and Shares right now, and then we're going to be done. But I wanted to give you that list so that you understand it doesn't have to be such a business-focused thing. As long as, as long as, you guys, you're working your business in a way that you're following up with those people that you're building their relationship, that you're inviting them to your next challenge, that you're inviting them to your team if it's appropriate, you know, at that time, that you are posting on your social media, that you're giving them something else to follow up with. If you're just throwing parties to throw parties, that's cool, but remember, that's not how you're going to build the business aspect. This is where you're going to start the connections and start the relationships, and that's the foundation. This is not an exaggeration, you guys. I have people who are on my team at this time, right now, this, what, 10 years later? I don't know, nine years later, who came to my first couple fit clubs. One of my, one of my bridesmaids, well, all of my bridesmaids were coaches, but one of them I literally met at fit club. I met her at fit club. She walked in, she lived a block away. She had just had a baby. This was 10 million years ago. She fell in love with Turbo Fire. We became Turbo Fire friends. She came to fit club all the time. She became a coach. She was just, she drove here from Arizona this weekend, um, she was at my house on Saturday. Like friendships can last forever in this business if you do all of this stuff, but the basis is health foundation. Uh, see the, the foundation is health, positivity, fitness, support, motivation, accountability. It's about living that lifestyle and just showing up as that person in all aspects, in all the places, if that makes sense. So, okay. Let's talk about the two things I saw the most requests for. Fit clubs and shake and shares. And I realize there's comments and I'm just definitely like not answering them, but I will go through it later. Um, oh, somewhere I posted in here. Okay, somebody said flea market. Okay, people with booths. Okay, side, sidebar, because I don't want to forget this. This is so important. In this outline, I put some pictures for you guys of a booth that I did. Um, I want to make sure you understand that what you never ever want to do if you're hosting a booth or a trade show, sorry for the sidebar, but this is so important to me. Um, you don't just want to show up and give away a bunch of product. Again, connection is the key to this. Connection. Get contact information. Do some sort of raffle. Have something that they can taste but not take. So, you know, cut up beach bars or make Shakeology, whatever it's going to be. And then if they want to, you know, win something, Great, but have a raffle. And on that raffle sheet, get their email, get their phone number, get their information, ask what their goals are, ask if it's okay if you add them to your newsletter or if they would like to be part of your free community on Facebook. Like, use it as a start of a relationship. It is, having a trade show or a booth or a fair or any of this is not an opportunity for you to drop a couple hundred bucks on product and just throw it out in the world, okay? Beachbody does not need your advertising. They've got it, all right? This is you building connections. So make sure you leave there with contacts. 
people that you can continue to build relationships with, that you can follow up with, that you can maybe make a sale, maybe be a friend. Maybe they make a sale next month. Maybe it's a year from now. But make sure you're not just going in there and giving stuff away, okay? So many people do this so backwards. And they're like, I tried so hard. I put so much effort and it cost me so much money and I didn't get anything. And it's because you were after the wrong thing. Instead of, instead of being after contact info, you are being after a sale. And that is, where, that is where you get lost when it comes to those events. One of my favorite things back from the marketing days when I helped start the marketing firm was um, to say, oh, you know what? I just gave away my last business card. Can I have yours? That is one of those things where it's like you want to keep that contact information on you. Okay, ball in your court because this is more important to you than it is to them. So it's important to make sure you are getting the contact information. I just, I was at the airport coming back from the Success Club cruise, got sat next to somebody at the airport. We got to talking. He had done the original P90X. We talked about BOD. I got his card, sent him an email. Obviously in the email, I'm like, you know, talking about his dog, Duncan, and his daughter going to nursing school. And like, I'm rehashing our personal conversation. And then I'm offering him the link that we had talked about. And then I was able to text him to check his email. And he was like, cool, yeah, I got it. But that's, that only happened because I got his card, not the other way around. So can you see how if you were at a booth and you weren't getting contact information, you're kind of wasting your time, right? So that was a sidebar. It was an important, important sidebar. Sorry, going back. Okay. Yes, I have an entire training video on doing a booth or trade show event just somewhere on my YouTube. I will find it for you guys because it's, it's one of those things that I see people do so wrong that it hurts me. And what I never, what I never want for you is for you to put so much effort into something and then for you to like leave that event. Like I'm not good at this. I should quit. This isn't working for me. I'm never going to make a sale. Like that's not, that's not the plan. But a lot of times when we're not measuring the right things, we end up being discouraged because we think we weren't successful, but we were successful. We were successful somewhere else, but we, we measured the wrong thing. You know, it's like lifting weights and, and going by the scale. Well, what are you measuring? It's the same thing. So, all right, back to fit clubs and shake and shares, and then I'll let you guys go. Okay, fit clubs. Fit clubs. I had one. First thing first, you guys, I picked a time that I made non-negotiable for myself. I said, for one year, I will not miss this fit club, no matter what. This is not a joke. Carl Deichler called me and asked me if I would go speak at Super Saturday. This is not an exaggeration. I think I may have been in shock, honestly, because I said, I have Fit Club that day. <laughs> he was like, do you think someone could cover it for you? <laughs> and I was like, mm. I don't know. I was pretty serious. I made like a pretty serious commitment. Like, let me think about it. Like, I was not kidding. And like, now I look at it and like, well, that was crazy. But I was so committed to being there no matter what. Even if nobody showed up, I was going to be there because in case somebody did, I didn't want people to think I was flaky or like I wasn't going to come or whatever. Like then if I make it optional, then they have, they make it optional. No. So commit to something that you can do. So don't go overboard. If you can't do a big old thing, then do a walk and talk, right? Like make sure it's something you can do. Um, advertise them. You don't need to pay money. It doesn't cost money, but put them everywhere. Craigslist meetup. You can ask other meetup organizers to put your events on theirs. If you get to know them and you go to their events enough, they'll advertise for you. Um, put them on Facebook, put them on Craigslist. I don't know. I don't know what people on Instagram do to advertise events, but like, I'm sure it's something. Um, whatever you guys do, do that. Um, get it out there. Personally invite people. Okay. As well personally invite them. Tell them you really need their support and their help and you'd love to have them there. I had my first cycle about 14 people at it and then like the next five had like zero but just roll with me because I specifically invited people and was like listen I'm starting this thing and I need you. I need you to come. Like you need to come. Do you understand? Like I'm counting on you. Um, but I also advertise it everywhere and um, like whatever. I did just get the word out because it's not going to happen magically. Now, a little trick, if there's some people you really, really want to come, ask them to bring something. Tell them, hey, you know what? Can you bring the ice and I'll pay you for the ice of, for the Shakeology when you get here? Can you bring the cups? Can you bring, this is, this is like old school event planning. If you want people to show up, make them responsible for something. Make them part of it. Have them contribute in some way. 
it will make a difference. Now, it's usually the rule of thirds, like one third of the people, you'll get a third of the people, let's see, of 10 RSVPs, you're going to get a third of them completely no show, a third of them will text you and cancel, and a third of them will show up. So you want to set a higher goal of how many people you want to like RSVP, right? Um, but do what you can to ensure that they are going to be there. Um, get contact info from every single person that walks into your fit club. What did we just talk about? I just went on a whole thing about contact info. This is so important because so like what I just, I took the official Beachbody Fit Club waiver and I just slapped a word section on the bottom that was like name, email, address, birthday. Um, are you interested in Shakeology? Are you interested in coaching? Are you, are you interested in all these things? They could check boxes or whatever. Well, they had to give me the waiver to work out because like Beachbody said so. So I got every single contact, every single person's contact info. Now some people would be like, I'm not telling you that. They would just sign it and they would not fill out the info. That's okay. It was very rare. Very rare. Uh, but I friended them all on Facebook anyway, so they couldn't really hide from me. Um, connect on social media with everyone. Tell them, hey, we advertise our events on Facebook. Hey, we have a we have a group that we are also in on Facebook. Have your free, I call it my VIP group or your free customer group or whatever. You know, hey, we connect here too. So hey, there's motivations and recipes and whatever over here. Make sure that they're coming onto your social media so that if you have something every Saturday that Sunday through Friday, they're still connecting with you and you're connecting with them, right? Um, make it very inclusive. No clicks. No cl clicks, 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 clicks. Yeah, that's how you said it. No mean girls crap, okay? Listen, you are on. When that big club door opens, you are on. Your job is to warmly welcome every single person that walks through there like they are your best friend and that you would die if they don't come back. That is your job because people feel so uncomfortable walking into a room full of strangers. So your job is to take that off the table. If you're uncomfortable, too bad. Shelve it. Take some Energize. I don't know what you need to do. Get over it because you, it's not about you today. It's about them. They don't come back unless they feel comfortable and welcomed and loved. So make them comfortable. Um, one thing that I always did was I would gauge the room a little bit. I wouldn't tell people to work out in advance very often. And I'd be like, what are we working with here? Like, let me look around. Remember you guys, I was heavy. So my first fit clubs were mostly heavy people. That was legit. We did a lot of hip hop abs to start because there's not a lot of getting up and down off the ground. Cause that's really hard when you have an extra hundred pounds on your body. But as my progress came, so did theirs. And we started doing more things and turbo fire came. We did insanity. We like all did the fit test. And we wrote it all down. Like I printed a copy for everyone. We had our fit club, you know, our insanity fit test. I mean, we eventually got there, but you know, know your audience, right? Um, because if you, if they feel bad about themselves, they're not going to come back. Right? So this isn't about your workout. It can be, it provided a lot of accountability for me. So I definitely want to make sure I had progress every single week that I saw them because I felt like it was my responsibility to do so, but like make sure that it's not about you. It's about them. Right. Um, okay. Have samples. You can do energize. You can just make one big shaker of energize and like do Dixie cups. So you don't have to spend a million dollars on energize. Not everybody needs a whole packet. Plus if they never had it, like they might have a heart attack. <laughs> not everyone, like not a real heart attack. Don't anyone like call the police, but, um, you know, it's a lot. If you've never done pre-workout, it can be a little bit much. Um, Shakeology afterwards, every time, every time. And what I would do is I would just project. I got a little projector on Craigslist. I would project it on the wall. And afterwards I would play the decide video or like the intro to team beach body video, some video. See, now they add them at the end of the workouts. They didn't back then. So thank you corporate for getting that together. But I used to have to play it. So I would like, while we're cleaning up and having Shakeology and just chatting and connecting and doing our big group picture, I'd have Beachbody opportunity stuff playing so that they could watch it. And at some point I got smart and started doing it before the workout. That was genius. But then people started coming late and it was all bad. So I kind of switched it up. Keep people guessing. Um, but I always took a picture at the end during that time. Always, always. Sometimes people would try to sneak out, and that's cool. But like, this is the price you're paying for coming to my free workout, okay? Um, because what happened? I tagged them all on Facebook. 
what does that do? I would say, bring a friend next time. What is it going to happen? All their friends are going to see and they're going to want to come to my thing, right? So I would use every event for more than what it was necessarily worth at that moment, right? I would continue to grow and I would, I would use that opportunity to promote other events. Hey, if I'm doing a vision board party next week, you know, I'm talking about it at fit club. Like, I didn't run like events every single, like all the time. I know it sounds that way from all these things, but this was over a couple years. Like bear with me. But if I had something else going on, there's a 5k coming up or something like take the opportunity to mention it there, promote the event. Hey, are you going to be there? Oh, you have a lot of fun. Like, let's go, let's do it together. Right. Um, so that is one thing to consider you guys. If you, if you do have a long way to go on your journey in person, it's actually a lot easier. Um, because instead of being like, look at me and you should do what I say. It's like, Hey, you want to go try this new CrossFit class together? Um, it's going to be terrifying and horrible. Uh, we might die. You want to do that with me to a complete stranger. And then they're like, yeah, I do want to do this free thing with you. And the number of free, I've never done like, I've never done CrossFit. It's not my jam. The number of free CrossFit classes I've gone to, it's a lot. Cause every CrossFit place has one. Um, and people want to go to them. And then you can be like, well, I almost died. Did you almost die? Let's never do that again. Why don't we do a different program? Let me help you. Like, that's never the agenda. Like, it's just a cool way to connect with people who want to work out. But if you think about it, like, the more you show up to those kinds of things, the more you can bring them to your fit club. So shake and cheers, last thing, and then we're going to go, okay, for my East Coasters who are falling asleep. Um, shake and cheers were my favorite, and I didn't call them that. I called them, like, goal setting groups or meet and greets or girls night in um, but it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. Call them something cute. Okay. But they're shaking chairs though, for real. Like that's what they are. Um, so here's what I did first. I advertised them. I put them on meetup, but I always made it a limited number of spaces because I did them at my house and I put some pictures of that in here too. Um, I did them at my house and, um, I would keep it limited. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to be, I want to connect, right? Cause you guys connection, this all comes down to connection. If, if, if someone comes into your fit club and they don't feel connected, they're not playing back. If someone comes to your shake and share and they don't feel connected and they feel like they're trying to just sell them something, they're not going to buy anything from you. That's not what's going to happen. They're going to leave and they're going to be like, oh, it's another one of those parties. Oh, like you don't want that. Right. Um, okay. Advertise them, get the word out again, invite people, ask them to bring something. Can you bring veggie tray? I will pay you for it when you get here, whatever, like make sure People are committed to coming and keep them small. So what I would do, this is my recommendation for you guys. Connect first, then go into Beachbody. So, um, you know, sit in a circle, whatever your living room or kitchen can handle, small group, and start first, tell your story and explain what your goals are and then ask them what their goals are and why they came. And just connect and see what it is that you can help them with. Some people are going to say stuff that maybe you can't help them with. And that's okay. But you might know somebody who can because your whole goal here is to be of service, right? And to connect. So think about all the things people are going to say that you can help them with. Maybe they're just looking for accountability and support because they feel like they're on the journey alone. We got you, girl. There's eight of us here. Let's do it. Then when everyone's feeling connected, they've shared, you feel like, okay, I can really help you guys. That's when you're going to play intro to team beach body, or I love the decide video, but it's too old now. I feel like I need, we need a new one corporate. Can we get a new one? Um, because the last line that Carl says is so good. Like it just gets you, but, um, it's outdated. So Brooke has a great video joining our team. There's the one about challenge groups, whatever your, whatever your jam is, it doesn't matter. The Shakeology breakthrough video is great. Whatever your thing is, it doesn't matter, but you're going to, you're going to play something for them while you're playing that go make Shakeology for them. Now, I'd recommend already having Shakeology cookies out, beach bars cut up into little pieces, um, you know, fruits and vegetables out, like healthy stuff, but not enough that they're not going to want to drink the Shakeology because they're full. Um, and then when they're done watching the video, have everyone come in, try the Shakeology, just ask, like, what did you think about the video? What did you like about that? What did you like? What do you like about the Shakeology? So on and so forth recommendation, get their contact info. I did a raffle at every single one. So it was the same, that raffle, like I mentioned for the booth. And it said on the bottom, what can I contact you about? Shakeology, coaching, challenge group, fit club. And then my last one was like, none of it. I'm just going to get plastic surgery or something just to like be a smart ass. Um, take pictures, share it on social media, connect with them, make sure they all friend each other, make sure you friend them. Um, like 
use the opportunity to connect people, facilitate relationships, yours or otherwise. So we made it. We made it, you guys. Okay, we're done here. We're ready. Are you ready? Okay. So I know that this sounds like a lot of work, but you guys listen to me. It's not more work than what you're already doing that isn't working. And I'm not saying your business isn't working. I do a lot of social media stuff that's only social media that works great. But I would rather you put in the effort, the time, possibly the money that you, um, that you like might have to invest to pay. I mean, my fit, my fit club space was 15 bucks an hour cause it was a personal training studio. So I rented it. Like, um, it was a studio. Like, like I was personally training somebody in there. I paid for that. And I sometimes, eventually I paid my assistant to come help me make the shakeology so I could connect with people, whatever it was it costs money. So if you've got to invest time or you have to invest money, um, or it's just, you know, energy and focused attention, intention, I understand that that can seem like a lot, like I get it, but I would rather you invest in something hard that's going to last you a really long time and is going to create meaning and connection in your life and in your community um, than have you keep investing in this online training and that online training and this online training and feel like you're just treading water and eventually give up on coaching and just be like, I guess I was bad at it. I would rather you do the hard work, seriously. It's worth it. People come start for the business, but they stay for the people and you get to be part of that. Um, I, I love the fact that I'm still friends on Facebook and they still are on my team. So many people from our first fit clubs, that first year that I have now traveled with and spent time with. They've been in my wedding. I've been to, you know, we've had multiple kids and I've been to baby showers and all the things. Um, it's really, really cool. And I traveled the country for almost three years, four years and San Diego wasn't home for a while. And I, now I have that in multiple places, but it's still here too. I came home and it was like, everyone's still here. Everyone's still connected with me. Everyone's still like, Hey, you want to go walk around the lake? Like it's really, really cool. And when it's intentional and it's on your schedule, you don't have to worry about getting burnt out or overwhelmed. My fellow introverts just, you know, focus on it and do it when it's right for you and you'll be good. So um, I'm going to drop this Google Doc now. I know you probably wanted it earlier, but I didn't want y'all just like doing whatever and not paying attention to me. So there's the document. Um, I just, oh, oh, I can't put a Google Doc there. It says community standards. Rude, Google, nobody likes that. Um, let me try to put it here. See if it'll let me. I think I just put it in the top. Google's trying to tell me I'm being spam. No one likes you. Or no, Facebook's telling me I'm being spam. Okay, so yes, that's the, do you want me to like, like keep going and like answer these? Like what do I do with all these comments? <laughs> um, okay, I hopefully, hopefully these are like not um, questions that need answering like, spoken plastic surgery option was really funny people really enjoyed that um i would just i would i would just invite strangers to my home women only though yeah so uh, is that janine is that how you say that um i would invite strangers to my home but they were women and for the most part what was cool is i had already met them at another meetup group or they'd already been to my fit club like i knew them i knew them through another interaction um, which is why I would invite them. Um, yeah, Angela, starting a fit club can be such a pain in the butt uh, cost-wise. So personal training studios, yoga studios, um, martial arts studios. So here's what I would look for. Anything that is closed when you want to use it. Because anything that you bring to them is extra money, even if it is $10. Um, I had a key. I paid a deposit for the key. And I came and went as I pleased. Um, at both the martial arts and the, and the personal training studio. Um, it's really, really common. Just, you can even do it in office buildings. If you have, you know, if your office is closed, a lot of my vision board parties were done in the conference room of my company, uh, after hours when I started, um, I did trainings for San Diego, same thing. We would just, you know, the 20 San Diego beach body coaches back then would show up at my office. Um, it, and we would just hang out in my conference room. Like sometimes you have to get kind of creative. But as far as cost, yes, people say, oh, go to a hotel. 
No, those, it's so much money. It's so much money. Um, churches are great. Schools. Um, I know somebody does a Zumba class. My husband's a teacher and they don't have a gymnasium, but they have a basketball, um, basketball court. They're called courts. There we go. And they do Zumba at it. And I'm like, well, why can't we use the basketball court? I want to use it, you know? Um, so let me see. That's my thought is like, get creative with space. Cause yeah, if it's too expensive, that's not, that's not worth anything. Um, I scared that I scared her with the people. Okay. Waivers are still in the back office. I assume yes. Medical disclaimer. I think I was supposed to say something about a medical disclaimer somewhere. Um, but put disclaimers on everything, income disclaimer, medical disclaimer. I say them all guarantees nothing. Please check your, you know, stuff. Um, certified instructor to hold a fit club. No, not unless you instruct, in which case you need insurance. Okay. Um, you do not need to be a certified instructor to be a fit club, uh, person because was, I was just playing the beach body DVDs and I, I made them watch the whole warning and they would get so mad at me. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. You watch that warning. Do you agree to this warning? Do you agree to this? You might die. It says you're going to possibly die when you do turbo fire. Okay. Like, do you still want to do it? Because I didn't want to ever get accused of like, not them, not knowing, you know? Um, okay. That's cool. A community center. Yeah. Out in, okay. So you guys, I live in a big city. So people think that's cool. It's actually really a pain in the ass because everyone's already too busy. They already have their friends. Um, and nobody wants to give you anything for free, like ever, ever, ever. Um, it is in my opinion, a little bit easier in a smaller town. Like I like that I live more out this way now. Um, yeah. Libraries. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the croc center, the range Jones croc center actually has rooms that they let us use. Um, when I was in AKSI, um, we were a nonprofit. So I know depending on, um, you know, different things, the way your businesses are set up or whatever, I know there's a lot of things out there. So what's really interesting about this, you guys, is it's only going to show me the last 10 comments. So the 264 people that already commented, I can't see it. Sorry. I'll see them when I get off though. And I'll try to type my answers. No, I never signed a waiver for a walk and talk because anybody's allowed to go and walk around. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not hosting. I was just like, Hey, I'm gonna go there. You want to come? Here's where I'm going to be. Like, so I didn't take on liability for that. I do know there are permits required. If you hold a class though, if you were to like, I'm going to go teach Pio in the park, they have a lot of laws about that. No, no more than three people. It's, it's a whole bit or you need a permit for a class. Um, yes. Okay. Cloud, yes, you're moving in five months. No, listen, this is what you're going to do. Girl, wherever you're moving, go join everything for that new place and start making friends. When I moved back here, I actually moved up to Temecula for a little while. And I, six months before I started moving, I joined every local group and I started looking at events and seeing who was the hosts and like making friends now. So if you're moving um, and in five months, I would say do the first two things I said, skip starting to host but do things in your community just to like make friends on Facebook. But I would start, I would start focusing on the place you're going. Um, <laughs> Jen, that's so funny. Do you want to go to the zoo with me? You have to sign this first though. Just saying, do you stick to one program? No, I did. Okay. Beachbody has rules about consecutive days of doing a program at a fit club. So I literally changed it every single week. It was different every week, but I did like a lot of the easy stuff at first because people were, um, Again, I mean, I had so much weight to lose. And when I, when I shared my journey and I wanted people to join me, it was like, hey, I need accountability. Do you want to do this together? So people also would show up that had 100 pounds to lose. So um, I stuck to the easy stuff, but I did change it all the time. Um, yeah, if you're doing things in the park, you have to make sure you don't break any rules. Like if people are just happen to be working out at the park, minding their own business individually, that's fine. But if you start instructing, once you get into that live instructor space, that's a whole ball game that requires insurance. And, and I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I have all those certifications just because, you know, that's a thing we do, but I don't use them and I don't, I don't teach. So I don't know. You need to ask somebody else. Somebody else. Um, yes. Oh, totally. Michaela. Yes. So cloud read Michaela's comment above you. Um, 
just connect with all, that's what I did. Ask questions, ask questions about the new town. If you guys are in local groups and you want people to start to know you ask questions, Hey, I've lived here for a year and I realized I've never found a hairdresser, gotten my oil changed. Please get your oil changed faster than a year. But I'm just thinking I lived in this, uh, this building about a year. So I could easily say like, I've always, you know, I've never gone to a really good dinner out here. Like you can ask those kind of questions. Now that's a social media thing. So, I mean, I could, I could teach you weeks of connecting on social media, but so I won't go there, but you can meet people in person by doing these things. No, I, no, Wendy, I didn't change the people I invited. I mean, I always add new people, but no, I, I mean, I was building a community. I want everybody there. I want to see you every week. Like I want to see you. We, at one point we were doing insanity. We were, we were doing things at home and then like we would do on Saturday that workout and we would do the fit test thing or whatever. And like, we'd all weigh in and stuff. Like that was cool. It was a lot of work. Didn't last long, but it was cool. Um, so I want, I would want them to be, you know, I want them to be connected. Like I want a community, um, not just a customer base, you know, like I want connection, not sales. You know, anybody can give me a paycheck. That's not, you know, there's more to it. Do I need a waiver for a walk and talk? No. Do I charge the people I invite? Wendy, you can. So you are allowed to ask for donations as long as you don't make more money than it costs you. So I've had a little um, trick or treat bucket and it just, people knew like, tips or donations if you want. The goal was always to make 15 bucks. Sometimes I did. Sometimes I didn't. I was comfortable either way. Um, yeah. So I, I, you can totally ask for donations and I would just explain like the room costs us 15 bucks. If anyone has a buck, don't like throw one in there. And if you don't, please don't take that as a reason to not come back. Um, don't worry about it. Um, because you know, it was a free group. So that was the whole point of that. Um, but no, you can't make money. They cannot have a profit. That's a rule. You cannot have a profit on it. Um, yeah, laptop and press play. That's what I did. I plugged it into a projector though, so more people could see it, Angela. Um, that's what I did. So, and you guys, I, you know, I really want you to think about this. Please don't get too caught up on like the specifics of the how. Just like set your intention to be really purposeful of connecting and community. You know, on um, the San Diego Beach Bodies cover photo that I made, um, the Beachbody coaches, it says community, not competition. Like, that's what I believe here. Like, I, I think that the whole network lasts longer and grows bigger if we create something real. Like, I got a message today from somebody who signed up as a coach three weeks ago. Their coach, their upline has unfollowed them on Instagram, completely ghosted them, got their two successful points and moved on. She's local to me. Or no, she's not local. Tara, are you local to me? I added her in the group. That sucks. That sucks. That would have never happened if her and I had connected and had a real connection. You know what I mean? Because connection is what creates that the success for her and the results for her. And she's going to keep coming back and seeing me. And I'm going to know about what's going on with her kids and what's going on with her job and all the things. And, you know, I'm going to know when she has her baby or whatever the stuff is like, it matters, you know? So I know you guys want to get all caught up in the, in the rules and in the stuff. That's not the point. Bear with me. Your number one goal is to connect and create community around you and do it in every, every aspect that you can. Okay. So I do want to go because once, if people see how long this is, they're going to stop. Um, they won't want to watch it. So we've already gone way, way longer than we should have because um, of the questions. But please understand that is where I'm headed. Like stick to the fact that this is about real genuine connections with people in the world that you are in. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, not all your friends have to live on your phone. Like they can be out here too. Um, so that's it. I'm going to go. I don't want to waste um, too much more time and have it go long. So I'm going to go, but then I'll go through. I'll go through and see what I can answer in the comments once it loads. Okay. Thank you so much for having me guys. I really hope this is helpful. Feel free to keep asking questions. I'll do my best to monitor this. Um, have an awesome night into my East coasters. Thank you for staying awake with us.